Let's Estimate, a book about estimating and rounding numbers. Written by David A. Adler, illustrated by Edward Miller. How old are you? Did you answer 10, 11, or 12? What you answered is probably not your exact age. It's your approximate age. If today is not your birthday, you should have said about 10, 11, or 12. Of course, when someone asks your age, it would be odd to give your exact age. It would be odd if you answered, I am 10 years, seven months, four days, three hours, and 12 minutes old, and your age keeps changing. Now, you may be 10 years, seven months, four days, three hours, and 12 minutes old. Soon, you'll be 10 years, seven months, four days, three hours, and 13 minutes old. When someone asks how old you are, he wants to know about how old you are or how old you were on your last birthday. Many times, an approximate answer is just as good as an exact answer. Sometimes, it's even better. If someone were to ask you the population of the United States, you might answer 320 million. For most purposes, that's a perfectly acceptable answer, but it's not an exact answer. It's an estimation. The population of the United States is about 320 million. It would be difficult to give the exact population of the United States. Each day, people are born and people die. People move to the United States and people leave. The population keeps changing. It's often important to estimate. When you're food shopping, it's good to estimate the total cost of all the items in your cart. You need to know you have enough money to pay for it all. How would you estimate the total cost of the items in your cart? You might try rounding the cost of each item and then adding them up. When you estimate, you make an educated guess at an actual number. When you round a number, you change it so it's easier to work with the number. Estimating is not rounding. Rounding is not estimating, but rounding can help you estimate. For example, you might have a box of cereal in your cart and it costs might be $3.95. That's about $4. So you round the cost of the cereal to $4. You might have a quart of milk in your cart and it, its cost might be $1.95. That's about $2. So you round the cost of the quart of milk to $2. You might have three bananas in your cart and the cost of each might be 29 cents. That's about 30 cents. So you round the cost of each banana to 30 cents. Together, the three bananas cost about 90 cents. You might even round the 90 cents to $1. After rounding the cost of the cereal, milk, and bananas, you add the items. $4 plus $2 plus $1 equals $7. You could estimate the cost of, your, of the items in your cart to be $7. The actual cost of the items in your cart is $6.77. It's especially important to estimate when you use a calculator. Here's a multiplication problem Sarah has for homework. 19 times 11. 19 is just one less than 20. 11 is just one more than 10. Since 20 times 10 equals 200, Sarah estimates that 19 times 11 is about 200. But the answer on her calculator is 2,109. That's a lot more than her estimate. She does the problem again. This time, the answer on her calculator is 209. 209 is close to her estimate of 200. What happened? The first time Sarah did the problem on her calculator, by mistake, she multiplied 19 by 111 instead of 11. By estimating before she did the problem, she knew her first answer was wrong. If your estimate is very different from the answer on your calculator, you made a mistake. To make her estimate, Sarah rounded both 1911 to the nearest 10. Rounding is helpful when you estimate. When you estimate, you guess what the actual number is. When you round a number, you know the actual number, but you change it to a number that is easier to use. There are no real rules for estimating, just that you try to get close to the actual number. There are rules for rounding. Rounding is often done to the nearest 10, the nearest 100, the nearest 1,000, and higher. When you round to the nearest 10, you look at the digit just to the right of the tens place. If it is five or more, you round up. If it is less than five, you round down. In the number 463, the digit six is in the tens place. The digit just to the right is three. Three is less than five, so you would round down. 463 rounded to the nearest 10 is 460. In the number 1,248, the digit four is in the tens place. The digit just to its right is eight. Eight is more than five, so you would round up. 1,248 rounded to the nearest 10 is 1,250. 
To round to the nearest hundred, look at the digit in the hundreds place. In the number 427, the digit four is in the hundredth place. The digit just to its right is two. Two is less than five, so you would round down. 427 rounded to the nearest hundredth is 400. In the number 4,162, the digit one is in the hundredth place. The digit just to its right is six. Six is more than five, so you round up. 4,162 rounded to the nearest hundredth is 4,200. When you round a number to the nearest 100, all digits to the right of the 100th place will be zeros. To round to the nearest thousand, look at the digit in the thousandth place. In the number 2,862, the digit two is in the 1,000th place. The digit just to its right is eight. Eight is more than five, so you round up. 2,862 rounded to the nearest 1,000th is 3,000. 3, in the number 238,915, the digit eight is in the thousandth place. The digit just to its right is nine. Nine is more than five, so you round up. 238,915 rounded to the nearest 1,000th is 239,000. When you round a number to the nearest 1,000th, all digits to the right of the 1,000th place will be zeros. People often use rounded numbers. When the newspaper reports that 115 million people watch the Super Bowl, surely the number of viewers has been rounded to the nearest mi million. People often estimate. When you decide how much pizza to buy for a party, you are estimating how much your friends will eat. When someone says, I'll be at your house in 20 minutes, that's an estimate. When someone says, I spent $300 shopping, surely he rounded the amount he spent to the nearest 10. Pick any two digit numbers. Estimate what your answer would be if you multiplied them. Use what you learned about rounding numbers to help you make your estimate. Use a calculator to multiply the numbers. How close was your estimate to the actual number? Estimating and rounding are very useful skills. The more you estimate and round numbers, the better you'll get at it. How many steps does it take to walk from your house to the next? How many houses are there on your block? Estimate how many steps it will take you to walk from one end of your block to the other, then count as you walk. How close was your estimate to the actual number of steps?